say it is always a pleasure we enjoy coming and being we uh, each week we appreciate you uh, watching it's uh, one of my favorite part of the weeks is when we come and do this I enjoy it and uh, I really enjoy being with you and I appreciate everyone that tells me every week uh, every week somebody will either call me or see me or tell me they're watching it have, has never told me before so we appreciate everyone that is a watching God bless you I hope uh, something is said that will encourage you that will build you up spiritually you know I, it's my goal to help you not to put you down not to hurt you but to encourage you to help you give you an invitation come be with us at Lacey's Chapel we'd love to have you uh, God is blessing our church it's a good church got really good people in it uh, some wonderful people in this church just really good people and uh, I want to thank the people at least chapel they let us borrow their baptistry they've done that several times and I appreciate that we the people that we baptize they've always helped us we appreciate them and uh, all the people at Lee's Chapel, I really appreciate you helping us. I really do. And uh, I appreciate you lend us in your baptistry. So uh, we give you an invitation to come be with us at Lacey's Chapel. Go to Henry Crossing. Go 40 West. Church is three miles on your left. We'd love to have you. Have visitors all the time. We'd just love to have you. Uh, you'll feel welcome. And I've said this of all the churches I've pastored, and I've been doing this just right at 30 year, uh, this is the friendliest church ever pastored. It's got some really, really, really good people in it. Wonderful people. And uh, we'd love to have you. So make plans, come be with us. Uh, today we're going to be reading for Matthew chapter 3. Uh, we talked about last week about the word righteousness. And uh, we said that righteousness has the strong, exhaustive concordance. It has two meanings. I spent a lot of time looking up that word, and uh, it has two meanings. One is, uh, one of the meanings of righteousness is doing what is in agreement with God's standards. That was the definition. I wrote it down. Uh, that's called progressive righteousness, and the word progressive means to increase. It means that uh, God's to be doing what is in agreement with God's standards. That was Strong's definition of righteousness. That was the one of the meanings. The second meaning was, and this is what we preached on last week, uh, positional righteousness, and that is the state of being in proper relationship with God. So positional righteousness is what happens when you get saved. It happens at birth. Uh, I know we, we preached on this last week, but I'll just read one of the verses real quick. Romans 5, talking about positional righteousness. And here's what it says, in case someone didn't watch last week. But I want you to understand the word, the word righteousness has two meanings. One is, the first meaning is what theologians call progressive righteousness. It's 
doing what is in agreement with God's standard or God's word. That is the definition of righteousness. One of the, the first definition is doing what's in agreement with God's standard. And we're going to look at that today, but the second definition of righteousness has two definitions. Is the state of being in proper relationship with God. That's what the word righteousness means, right standing with God. That's the second definition of the word righteousness. It has two definitions. And when you read the Bible, you'll come across verses that, is, that explains that when you got saved, that God gave you the gift of righteousness. Well, that's the second definition of righteousness, the state of being in proper relationship with God. And that's what the word righteousness means, right or right standing with God. That's one of the definitions of righteousness, is right standing with God. So, so to understand, I know we preached on it last week, but I still want to go over this verse. There's three verses on uh, positional righteousness that we did not look at last week that I want to look at uh, this week. Then next week, if the Lord's willing, we'll, we'll talk about pro, uh, progressive righteousness. It's those commandments in the Bible where God commanded us to do a certain thing to be righteous. But you have to understand there's two definitions of righteousness. One is right standing with God or the state of being in a proper relationship with God. That's positional righteousness. That's the gift that God gave you when you got saved. The other definition is uh, progressive righteousness. The word uh, progressive means to increase. So progressive righteousness is doing what is in agreement with God's standard or God's word. So uh, you get positional righteousness. You get right standing with God when you get saved. You just think about this, the thief on the cross that I said, Lord, remember me in the, remember me when I come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, today thy shall be me in paradise. That guy didn't do nothing. He done not one thing for God except believe on Jesus. Well, Jesus said, today thy shall be with me in paradise. He got Positional righteousness. He was declared righteous or he was made in right standing with God. And you say, well, I don't know if a person is made. Well, you couldn't go to heaven if you wasn't. If you wasn't made righteous when you got saved or you wasn't given right standing with God, there's not going to be any sinners in heaven. You have to understand that when you got saved, you got right standing with God or you was made righteous. So what, you know, I said this last week, but I was listening one day to uh, Chuck Swindoll and I absolutely loved to hear Chuck Swindoll preach. And he said this was one of the greatest truths he ever learned. And he was over the theological... Uh, the Dallas Theological Seminary in Dallas for a long time. He was over the seminary. He, you know, he knows the Bible. I heard Billy Graham say that. I heard Charles Stanley say it. I'm talking about the greatest preachers in our country understand positional righteousness. The greatest preachers in our country understand it. The, the Bible says you were made righteous when you receive Jesus, it's compositional righteousness. It's what God did for you, or it was God's gift to you. Now, progressive righteousness, or the verses in the Bible, see, positional righteousness is what God did for you. It's what God gave you when you got, if you didn't, you couldn't go to heaven. If God didn't declare you righteous, you couldn't go to heaven. You couldn't. A lot of people, like the thief on the cross, have got saved right before they died. They didn't do nothing except believe on Jesus. 
Well, if they hadn't been granted positional righteousness or made righteous, they couldn't have went to heaven. Well, here's the verse that explains it. I'll just, I'll just read it. These real quick. Uh, we'll just start verse 16. Romans chapter 5 verse 16. Not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Okay? What does, what does this mean? The judgment was by one to condemnation. The judgment was to one. Who's the one that sinned? Adam. To condemnation. The word condemnation means declared guilty. See, this is good stuff. So, because Adam sinned, this is what it's saying, we were all declared guilty before God. We were declared sinners. Because through Adam, we all sinned. We was all born into sin. But the free gift is of many offenses unto the free gift. We're going, talk, we're going to be talking about the gift here, the gift of righteousness. Unto justification. Well, the Bible said the free gift is unto justification. What does the word justification mean? God says his free gift to you produced justification in you. What's the word just what does the word justification mean? Declared righteous. It means declared righteous. Look it up. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense, talking about Adam, death reigned by one, because Adam sinned. Adam and Eve sinned, both of them sinned. Because they sinned, sin came unto us. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which received abundance of grace. Man, this is good stuff right here. Paul is writing. God's using his hand. It's really God using the Holy Ghost to speak to Paul. But he writes, who received the abundance of grace. Talking about salvation here. God said, you didn't receive a little bit of grace. God said, you received a lot of grace. You received an abundance of grace. Man, that's good. This is such good stuff right here. The abundance of grace. We received an abundance of grace, or you could say God's unearned favor upon our life. You wonder why that, uh, we sometimes wonder why, we wonder why that things are going like they're going. And you say, well, I don't deserve how God's blessed me. It's because you received an abundance of grace upon your life. You received an abundance of grace. That's what the word, I'm reading the word of God to you. God said, I gave you abundance of unearned favor. It, man, it's good stuff. By, for if by one man's offense, talking about Adam, death reigned by one. Remember God told Adam, the day that you eat, this fruit, you'll die. He did not die physically that day. He died spiritually. He died spiritually. We were born dead. Paul said we were born dead. To, you know, in other words, we were born sinners. You know, Paul talks about we were dead. We were spiritually dead. Well, that's why Jesus said, I come that you may have life. Well, we're already alive. He's talking about spiritual life. He comes to make you alive spiritually when you believe on Him. You, you're done alive physically, but He's talking about spiritual. I come to give you life, eternal life, which is spiritual life. It's everlasting life. Not for a week or two days. I used to work with a guy, and he, he'd be saved one day, was saved one day, next day saved, be lost, next day be saved, and the next day, that's foolishness. 
Jesus said, I come to give you everlasting life. That's what Jesus said. Much more they which receive an abundance of grace. Now listen what Jesus said you get at salvation. You get the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. This is what God says. This is God's word. You receive abundance of grace, it's what he said, and the gift of righteousness. This is what God said. And some people won't even, will not receive the truth. They won't receive God's word. Well, it's total ignorance. Just, you know, stand up behind, oh, I believe it from cover to cover, preacher. No, you don't. If you dispute God's word, you don't believe it from cover to cover. I'm reading you the word of God. God said you receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. This is what God said you got when you got saved. And if you was wise when somebody showed this to you, you'd start rejoicing. If you was wise, you'd receive the word of God and praise God for it. Because this is what God's word says. The Bible said, let God be true and every man a liar. I've heard people, oh, you don't get righteousness when you... That's total ignorance. To make that statement, you're being completely ignorant of the Word of God. Completely ignorant of the Word of God. I don't care who says it. Preacher, deacon, I don't care. The Bible is what God says. Now, I'm going to stand on what God says. I, I really give a flip what anybody else says. All I'm worried about is what God says. God said, you received an abundance of grace... And the gift of righteousness. Man, it's good stuff. God says, remember the word righteous means right standing with God. God said, when you got saved, I give you an abundance of grace. And the word, one of the definition of grace means unearned favor. It means you receive God's favor that you did not earn. Man, it's good stuff right here. This is good stuff. God is telling you, God, let God be true and every man a liar. God is telling you what you got, what you got when you got saved. He said you received an abundance of God's unearned favor. You did not earn it. When you went down out of that altar or where you was at, wherever, and you asked Jesus to come into your heart, he put his favor upon you. You hadn't done one cotton-picking thing, darn it. Not one thing had you done. All you done was what he said and believed on him. That's how you got saved. This good, man, this good stuff right here. But he says, not only did I give you my unearned favor when you got saved. And, and we live, let me say this, we live in God's un, un, unearned favor. We live in it. Because none of us are perfect. None of us are. None of us are perfect. I had a guy tell me one time, you got to be perfect to go to heaven. I said, are you perfect? He said, no. I said, you pastor perfect? He said, no. I said, tell me somebody in your church is perfect. Well, when the Bible tells us to be perfect, what that word perfect means is mature. And I told that guy, he said, well, the Bible says be perfect. I said, you don't even know what that word means. It means mature. But I'm talking about perfect in the sense of we never make a mistake. I don't know one person is perfect. Never met a preacher that was perfect. Never met a, a preacher's wife that was perfect. Song leader, deacon, nobody else. I've never met them. And if they told me was, I know, I know they wouldn't be perfect because they'd be a lying then. The Bible said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all use God's grace. We all need God's grace 
we all, when we got saved, we received God's grace. And that word grace means unearned favor. This is, this is some, I mean, this is some wonderful stuff right here. God puts his favor upon you. God puts his favor upon you. I told you how God has blessed our church, and he has. And anybody that knows anything about our church knows God has blessed it, and he's blessed it, and he's blessed it. It is not because of the preacher. It's because God put his favor upon our church. We're, we're trying our best to do what the Word of God says do. And you have to do what the Word of God says do. Well, not only does God give us grace, or not only does God give us favor, this is a great truth to learn in your life. That God has put his favor up on you. Man, it's wonderful stuff. It's good stuff. You know, there are so many people that does not know this. There are so many people that's watching this program. And you don't even know if God loves you or not. You really don't. You say you do, but you don't. You really don't know. And I, and I read this verse about God has put his favor upon you or he's given you abundance of grace. The word grace means unearned favor. You, don't, you never knew that God has shows you favor. God's favor is upon you. But I, I do want to say this. <laughs> God's grace is upon you and God's favor is upon you. And we're going to talk about this next week. But you still have to do what the Word of God says to do. You remember when Jesus healed and He healed this woman. He healed her. Well, the Bible said grace and truth came of Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's what it says. He healed this woman. Well, it, if listen to me. If grace in truth came by Jesus. He healed the woman. What did he tell her? He said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. He, he told that woman, I've showed you grace. I've showed you favor. I've showed you mercy. I've healed you. But if you go back and get into sin, you're going to get something worse than you had to start with. That's what Jesus told her. And it's in red. He said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. What I'm saying, even though God has given his grace and he's given his favor, you still have to obey the word of God. And you say, well, I'm a Christian. I don't live any way I want to. You're ignorant of the word of God. And I'm not putting nobody down. That's just being ignorant of the word of God. He says right here, who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. He's talking about what happens when you get saved. Paul is writing this. He said, you receive the gift. Now listen to me. It wasn't something you did. We're talking about positional righteousness. It was not something you did. It was a gift. He said, you received the gift of righteousness. What does the word righteousness mean? Right standing with God. Man, this good stuff. You received the gift of righteousness. The state of being in proper relationship with God. It was a gift that you got when you got saved. And I, I, I've run out of time which received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Romans 5 and 17. It's in the New Testament. Paul wrote it. He tells what happened when you got saved. You received an abundance of grace. God didn't give you just a little bit of favor. He said, I give you an abundance of favor. I listened to this guy testify 
or give his testimony. He was on TV and he said, God has blessed me more than I deserve. Well, he was being honest, but I can make another really honest statement. He's blessed all of us more than we deserve because he has given us an abundance of grace or unearned favor. Not only that, but he has given us the gift of righteousness. What's something you've done? It was not something that you've done. And like I said before, and I love Chuck Swindoll, I love to listen to him, one of my favorite preachers. Charles Stanley's another favorite, Billy Graham. I've heard every one of these men teach on this. I've heard every one of these preachers teach on this and said it was one of the greatest revelations they got when they were saved, when they understood this. That when you got saved, the word righteousness means right standing with God. That's one of the definitions. The other definition is doing what's in agreement with God's word. We'll preach on that next week. In other words, God is saying, I made you righteous. I give you right standing with God. Then God says, now you got to live it. You got to act like what you are. And we'll, we'll talk about that next week. To this time next week, may God bless you. Get a chance to come be with us. You'll love it. May God bless you.